In this video, we will go through how the upcoming online only university semester is different compared to a normal semester at the campus. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel if this is the first time we are meeting. My name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics at Aalto University in Finland. And on this channel we talk about education and early career development specifically here in Finland. So if you're new here, do consider subscribing. So how is the at least partially online only semester going to be different from your normal classroom studies? Well, first things first, not only are most lectures, but also the majority of group exercises and even exams held online using online conferencing software. The software of choice for most universities, especially in Finland, is Zoom. And I really recommend that you familiarize yourself with that app before the beginning of the semester. So while you can use Zoom on your browser, I really recommend that you download the native Windows or Mac app to your computer because this is an application that you will be using every single day. Anyways, the first real difference between online and classroom courses is that online classes tend to have less interaction between students and professors compared to classroom teaching. This simply is a natural product of people working from home. For example, some people don't really like keeping their webcams on while listening to the lectures, and some others have a tendency of multitasking, aka playing with their phone or doing something else while listening to the lecture. In addition, not being physically present at a full classroom can have a psychological effect that might make it easier to lose track because you don't have the same pressure of staying focused and awake compared to a situation where you have other students and a lecturer interacting with each other. So while this might not have an impact on mass lectures where the level of interaction is low Anyways, the biggest impact is seen in seminar courses, which tend to have somewhere in between 10 to 30 people and where the learning process actually happens through interactive discussion and debate between students and their professors. A lower amount of interaction means a smaller amount of discussion, which again means that you will not get as much out of your classes as you potentially could. Keeping these things in mind, it is important that you recognize that it is your responsibility to be more proactive during the online lectures and that active participation is an important learning method that only you can control. As a great segue, a lower level of interaction means that if you really want to get everything out of your lectures, you really need to work on your study habits. This again means learning and developing systems and routines like for example, how to set up a distraction-free workstation at your home, or for example, how to block your day in order to be most productive. So normally these things would be automatically organized and scheduled for you because being physically present at the campus forces you to follow a certain system and timetable. I know that for some people, especially for many introverts, studying from home can actually work better than classroom education and many people have actually reported better results and grades because they have been able to fully focus on studying rather than stressing about social interactions while visiting the campus. However, this also means that those of you who struggle staying focused while working from home and who might not be as self-disciplined as others, you might want to build some new systems and methods in order not to run into issues. While doing courses online via Zoom has some drawbacks, it also has introduced some really big positives. Most importantly, the fact that most lectures are finally recorded and posted online to university course portals. Thank you. So why this is such a brilliant thing to have is that many people, like myself, sometimes have problems focusing during long multi-hour lectures and losing focus for just a second could mean missing that one key thing that the professor said that you definitely should have written down in order to prep for your exams. The second problem with traditional lectures is that it's very hard to do detailed notes while also listening to the lecture and absorbing the information at the same time. While some people can do it, for me, it's always been one or the other. 
However, now that we actually have recordings of the lectures, you can easily go back and re-watch either the entire lecture or just a small part of it in order to make more detailed notes or perhaps check out just that one detail that you missed while listening live. In my experience, this is especially true with difficult subjects like math-based topics, where you might not understand everything that the lecturer says live, and you need your own time to go through what has been taught. However, the best thing about this, in my opinion, is that as an auditory learner, I find that listening to the lectures over and over again and refining my notes at the same time works much better in terms of exam prepping compared to reading a book or articles. Of course, each of us is different in the way we learn, but I hope that you are able to utilize these course recordings to your benefit. Before we continue to the next section of this video, let me thank Alta University for their continuous support with this channel. Alta University is the number one ranking university in Finland in the fields of technology, business and arts and design. And it also ranks third in Europe and ninth in the entire world in the QS top 50 under 50 rankings. I've done both my bachelor's and master's degrees at Alta and I really recommend that you consider applying there in the next application period. More information about studying at Aldom through the links in the description box below. All right, let's jump into the last and in my mind the most crucial point in this list, which is online exams. So while some exams might be held in class during the upcoming semester, it is important that you understand that it is highly likely that the majority of exams are still held online, at least when talking about larger courses with hundreds of students doing their exams at the same time. There are multiple ways that online exams are different from normal paper exams, but let's go through just the two most important ones. Number one, normally in Finland, exams are graded not only based on your final answer, but your, for example, calculations and, for example, essay structures are also taken into account. This means that even if you make a small error, for example in a math exam, and don't get the exact right, right final answer, you would still be given points if you have the logic and the formulas done correctly. However, with online exams, the grading is much harsher. In my experience during the last six months, many exams only consider the final answer because you aren't able to submit your calculations for example, as an Excel file or a scan of your handwritten notes. This means that even the smallest mistake, for example, a misplaced comma or a bad simplification will get you zero points. Of course, this varies a bit between different kind of exams. For example, essay questions are basically graded as they would normally, because even if you write the essay on a computer, the end product is going to be the exact same. But it is still good to know that the online exams have less room for errors. The second thing to understand about online exams is that because they are done generally from home, they are much more difficult than those done at the campus. This is simply because professors and lecturers are not stupid and they understand that you have additional tools like Google and your course materials at your disposal. Again, in my experience, online exam questions are structured in a manner that you cannot simply control F the correct answer, rather answering the questions require you to understand the subject matter and even combinations of topics in order to answer a single question. If you are used to prepping to exams by learning facts by heart, I really recommend that you completely change this approach and lean more towards learning how to apply the theory and information that you're given during the upcoming courses. Talking about this topic, I'm actually currently working on a video about exams in Finnish universities. And as a heads up, Finnish exams usually tend to lean more towards applying the given information rather than learning individual facts and figures. So for example, if you are coming to Finland from Germany or other Central European countries, I really recommend that you consider adjusting the way you study for exams. 
Anyways, that is it for this video. If you found this video helpful, do give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who might also be interested in the topic. Also, if you have anything to ask about this or any other topic related to studying or working in Finland, do write them down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.